In this video, we're building a smooth, interactive transition in SwiftUI, inspired by the family app. You'll learn how to use matched geometry effect to animate views between screens, how to control visibility with opacity, and how to use Geometry Reader to create dynamic transitions based on the card's position. We'll also cover how to prevent glitchy user input during animations, and how to make everything feel natural with scale, blur, and scroll behavior. By the end, you'll have a fully working layout where tapping a card opens a detailed view with clean fluid motion. State is used to toggle the view between two states, small and big circle. And namespace is required for matched geometry effect, which we'll add later to animate between views. For now, we just declare it. More on that soon. Inside the body, we use if show to switch between two different circle views, one big, one small. When show is true, we display a big circle, 150 by 150. We push it to the right using frame with alignment, trailing. Tapping on it toggles the state with animation. When show is false, which is the default, we show a smaller circle, 100 by 100. This one is aligned to the left. Again, tap to toggle. All right, now let's clean up the view and focus only on the part that actually changes the visual content. We'll ignore the rest for a second and just look at the if else part inside the body. This will help us see clearly how the UI changes when we toggle the state. Here's what it looks like now. Now let's add the key part that makes this whole thing animate smoothly. Match geometry effect. This tells Swift UI. These two views, even though they're in different branches of the if statement, should be treated as the same view during animation. The ID is just a unique name that links them together. Both circles have the same ID, so SwiftUI knows to animate between them. And namespace is like a shared space where this matching happens. We already declared that earlier. Now one important thing to keep in mind, Always apply match geometry effect before the frame. If you put frame first like this, it messes up the animation. Swift UI captures the geometry after the frame is already applied, so it won't animate the size or position smoothly. All right, let's add more content to our view and see how it behaves. I'm gonna add a simple text just to sit on top of the circle. Now, just like we did with the circle, we also want this text to animate smoothly when switching views. So we add match geometry effect to the text too, with a different ID. Make sure the ID is unique for each element. Here we use text. So SwiftUI knows this is separate from the shape. Now let's say I only want to show the text on the big circle, but still have it animate smoothly when switching views. This is really simple. We just hide the text on the small circle using opacity. When show is true, the text is fully visible, opacity one. When show is false, it's hidden, opacity zero. But here's the key part. And this is important. If you want match geometry effect to animate something from one view to another, you have to include it in both views. Even if it's hidden, it still needs to be there. So we keep the text in both the small and large circle and just hide it on one side using opacity. That way, the transition still works. Let's see that in action. Now let's talk about a common issue with match geometry effect. When the shape switches from one view to another, you'll notice something weird. Swift UI fades the view during the transition, even though we never told it to. This is a default behavior. Match geometry effect automatically applies a cross fade, which can look like the shape is flashing or fading briefly. To fix this, we need to take control of the transition. The cleanest way is to use transition on the whole view. All right, here's token price view. It just shows the token's price and percent change, nothing fancy. We format both numbers to two decimals, and the color changes based on whether the value is up or down. Then we add match geometry effect to both. So when this view moves between screens, it animates nicely. And just like before, we use opacity to hide it when we need to without breaking the animation. Now we've got token row header view. This just shows the token's icon, name, and symbol. The icon uses match geometry effect, same as before, and so do the name and symbol, so everything animates when the layout changes. We also pass in high details. And if that's true, we just fade out the name and symbol using opacity, same trick we used before. That's it. Nothing complicated here. It's just a reusable header view that animates nicely. Now in the detail view, we use that token row header view at the top and we pass in a bigger image size when show is true. So the icon grows smoothly during the transition. Next to it, we have two icons, a star and an ellipsis. We fade them in only when show is true using dopacity. Behind them, we place the token price view again, and this time we flip the logic and show it only when show is false. 
So we're basically crossfading two sets of content during the transition, the header on one side and the price on the other. Here we just show more info about the token, the name, price, and percent change, but this time in a larger font. Below that, we add some rectangles to fill out the layout, one big card, and a list of smaller ones. It's just UI to make the screen feel real. Nothing animated here, just layout. Keep it clean. Right now, we're tracking the scroll direction of the view. If the user scrolls down, we allow it. But if they scroll up, we stop the scroll using offset, and if they pull up more than 60 points, we dismiss the view with animation. And to make the interaction feel smoother, we add a bit of blur. So the more you pull up, the more it blurs, up to a max of 10. It's a subtle touch, but it adds to the feel. When show is true, we keep the shape full screen, no corner radius. When show is false, we give it rounded corners and limit the height to 80 points at the top. That makes it feel like it collapses back into a card. It's a clean way to animate the shape of the view without needing extra layers. All right, let's break this down. We're wrapping each row in a geometry reader. Why? Because we need to get the exact position of that row on the screen. Later, when we open the detail view, we'll use that position to animate it smoothly from the card's current location all the way to the top. Inside the H stack, we show the token row header view on the left and the token price view on the right, just like before. We also use content shape to make the full row tappable, even the empty space. Now on tap, we check if can select is true. This is just a guard to stop users from spamming taps. If everything's clear, we block input for three seconds, just enough time for the animation to finish before allowing another selection. Without this, someone might tap two cards too fast and break the UI or even crash it. Then we use with animation to save the selected token, its index, and the Y position using GeoMin Y. That's what we'll use next to drive the opening animation. Now, once we've selected a token, we show the detail view using Doverlay. We check if selected token is not nil, and if it's set, we load token detail view right on top of everything. We also pass in the same namespace, so all the match geometry effect animations stay connected. Then we add transition with offset. This is important. It tells Swift 2i to animate the detail view from the same vertical position as the row we tapped. That's how we get that smooth lift effect, like the card expands from where it was. Simple, but very effective.